What's up, what's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood Shifty. And today I'm bringing you a video that's a little bit different than normal. This one is gonna be aimed at the content creators out there who are looking to add a little bit of spice to your thumbnails. And the style that we're gonna be looking at today is the split image style that is most commonly used for like noob to pro style series. For my work, I use Photoshop, but I do understand that not everybody has access to that. So we're gonna be using Photopea. Photopea is a free to use online image editor it's pretty fun to use, it has a lot of features and it's going to work just fine for our project. So head on over to photopea.com and once you're there, let's go ahead and set up our project. To set up our project, click on the new project button. That is going to load us into the new project template selection screen. We're going to select on the template that says 1920 by 1080 pixels. We're going to make sure that artboards is unselected and we will rename our project if you wish. Once you're satisfied with everything here, go ahead and click on the create button. That will load us into the editor window. Once we are inside of the editor window, we can see that we already have a background image placed for us and we can use that for our project, but we need to make some changes to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is unlock it. Then we're going to rename it. To rename it, just double click on it. I'm going to name mine right mask and click enter to confirm. And that name will make more sense here in a second. But first we need to adjust the size of this layer. We need it to be half the size that it is currently on the horizontal. To make that size edit, what we're gonna do is place our mouse over this left side drag handle. We're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna drag to the right. We'll drag until we feel it snap in the middle. And here you can see the snap happen. Once we're happy, just go ahead and release and then click the confirm check mark at the top to lock in that transform. Now we need to duplicate this mask and put it on the left side. To do that, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then drag with your mouse. Once you're happy with the position of that, go ahead and let go. And then just make sure to rename our new layer accordingly. And there we go, our project is now set up and ready to make our thumbnail with. I'm a Roblox YouTuber, so I have a lot of backgrounds that I've taken captures of, so I will use a couple of these for my thumbnail. I'll drag my first image like so, and then I'll drag in my second image on top of that. Now we need to figure out which image we want to be on the left and which one we want to be on the right. Once I've figured out which ones I want where, I'll go ahead and rename them appropriately. Now the left image is already in the proper position just above the left mask, so we need to drag the right image down just above the right mask, like so. So now we need to go ahead and link those images to their appropriate masks. To do that, we need to click on the image, right click, and then click on clipping mask. That will attach that image to its appropriate mask and we'll do the same thing for the right image. Click on the image, right click, click on the clipping mask. Now both of our images are linked to their appropriate mask and we can now make the edits to each one individually. I want to zoom out the scene a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to hold down the alt key on my keyboard and then I'm going to scroll out on my mouse wheel. I can reposition the image within the viewer by holding down the space button on my keyboard and then drag around with my mouse like so. Now we need to make the edits to our images so that we can actually see them properly and add a little bit of flair to them. So I'm gonna take the image on the left, I'll drag it to the middle. I will hold down the alt button while I drag on the lower drag handle that will let me scale this image up from the center. Then I can add a little bit of rotation just by clicking on the corner and rotating it just to the left or right however I see fit. Once I'm happy with those edits, I click on the confirm check mark at the top to lock in that transform. Now what we need to do is hide the left image by clicking the view icon next to it. Click on the right image and now we can make edits to the right side image as well. Once again, I'll drag it over, center it up, hold down the alt key and scale it up till I see fit. Add a little bit of playful rotation to it and then I'll lock in that transform by once again clicking on the confirm check mark at the top. So now we can go ahead and unhide the left image. We can check our work and make sure that we're happy with it. And if we are, we're almost done. So the next thing we need to do is add the splitter bar into the middle to separate the two images. We can do that by pressing U on our keyboard, which is going to bring up the rectangle tool, or you can click on the rectangle tool in the toolbar on the left. I'll drag out my rectangle until I'm happy with it. And when I let go, it places the rectangle. I don't like the color for it because it's kind of dark and you can't really see it against the background. So I want to change the color of it. So I'll just make sure that its layer is selected. Then I will click on the properties icon. This will open up a new properties window. I'll select on layer. And here we can see the color fill. I'll click on the color picker, which will bring up the color picker window. And then I'll select the color that I want for my splitter bar. 
for this example, I'm just going to go for something that is kind of like a light gray, something like that. And then I'll click OK. Now, if my rectangle tool is still selected, I will press a V on the keyboard to get back to my move tool. And then I can go ahead and close my properties window by clicking that icon once again. And then I can check my work and make sure that I'm happy. Let's go ahead and keep our work organized by making sure that all of our layers stay named appropriately. I'm just going to name this one splitter like so. And I think the splitter actually needs a little bit of drop shadow. So I'm going to make sure that once again, I select its layer. Then I'm going to click on the layer style at the bottom. I'm going to click on drop shadow. That will bring up the layer styles panel with drop shadow already selected. But we can see that the drop shadow is to one side. I want it to be on both sides equally. So I'm going to set the distance to zero. Then I'm going to set the angle to zero as well. I will bring the spread and size both up to zero. This looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK to confirm those edits. I'll check my work one more time, make sure I'm happy with it. I am. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add in my title text for the thumbnail. I'll press T on the keyboard to bring up the type tool or you can click on the type tool in the toolbar on the left. I'll go ahead and select the font that I want. For this example, I'm going to choose luckiest guy and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the color of the type before I even type to the color that I want by clicking the color picker for the type. I'm going to go for something that is like a golden yellow around about there. I'll click OK. Once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and click on my thumbnail where I want to put my text. I'll type out the text that I want and then click on the confirm check mark. And then we need to scale up this type. So we're going to press V on the keyboard to bring up our move tool again. Then we're going to grab that lower right drag handle and just drag to scale up our type as big as we want it. We'll position it. Once we're happy with the position and size, we'll click the confirm check mark once again to lock that in. Now I want some effects on my type. So once again, I'm going to make sure that the layer is still selected. Then I'm going to click on that layer style at the bottom. Once again, I'm going to add in a couple strokes. So the first stroke, I'm going to set that to be about 10, like so. I'll make sure the position is set to outside. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and add in my second stroke by clicking the plus icon. I'll select on the new stroke. I'm going to set the new size to be about 19 and I'm going to set the color to white. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my drop shadow by clicking on drop shadow like so. You'll have to play around with your drop shadow. But for me, the settings that seems to be working the best is going to be 60 on the spread and 70 on the size. The angle and distance are set to zero. And I think I do want a little bit more opacity. So I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 65. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click on OK to confirm. I'll check my work once again. Make sure I'm happy with it. It is looking pretty good and I'm happy with that. So now the last thing I want to do is add in my game logo for the game that I'm making a video for. I have the logo for the game on my desktop, so I'm just going to drag it into the image editor. I'll drag it to the top so that we can see it. And then I'll scale it down the size and make the edits to it that I want. Once I'm happy with the edits, I'll just go ahead and click the confirm check mark. Now real quick, I want to show you something. If you don't see those edit handles like you see on mine, all you got to do is click transform controls at the top and now you see those edit handles so my logo looks pretty good it already has some black stroke to it but i need to add the white stroke as well and the drop shadow so i'm going to click on the effects and then stroke and then i'm going to reduce the stroke size to match the existing black stroke that is already there then i'll click on drop shadow to add my drop shadow which for this logo is a little bit too large so after making some adjustments i came up with 30 on the spread and 70 on the size i'll click ok to confirm i'll check my work and once again make sure that i am happy with it and i am now at this point we're pretty much done with our thumbnail we could go ahead and download this and upload it to youtube to our video as the thumbnail and it should be able to get us some nice views on our video but obviously go ahead and feel free to use your own style your own flair make it custom to you and how you see fit and whatever is going to work for your videos so at this point what we need to do is go ahead and finish with our thumbnail by clicking on file and we're going to go ahead and hit export i'm going to choose jpeg because jpeg is a file format has a smaller size and the quality does not need to be that great because most of our viewers will be on mobile i believe the default quality will be set to 70 but i've set mine to 66 and once i'm happy i'll just hit save and there it is. Our finished thumbnail is looking great and ready to go. 
Well, all right, guys, I guess that's going to be about it for this one. Hopefully it has helped you out. And if it has, please make sure to go ahead and smash that like button for me. Go ahead and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. And if you don't care anything about this, just go ahead and drop me a comment to say hi. That'd be fine too. I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back in the next episode.